the honorable ministers present here, members of the National Assembly, my colleagues, leaders and representatives of other political parties, the Lord Mayors of Carnifin and Banjul, victims of April 14 and victims of April 16, victims of May 9, 2016. My compatriots, all protocols duly observed and respected. Today, we gather to be final farewell to Ibrahima Solo Sandem, a good Muslim, father to Malik, Aminata, Fatmata, Muhammad, Jainaba, Husseinu, Elias Loya Dabo, Eliman, Elias Undanyang, Shagna, and Fatima Nyali, husband to Nima Sonko, and a consummate patriot who loved his country, the Gambia, and was fervently dedicated to making her free, democratic, and prosperous. Six years after his martyrdom, a grateful young nation joins his family today not only to mourn his tragic loss and pray for his soul to rest in eternal peace, but also to celebrate his well-lived life. To those of us who knew and worked with sorrow in the long run out battle to defeat the brutal regime of Yahya Jame, his memory is etched into our hearts for the rest of our lives. Solo was an, extraordinary, was an ordinary citizen who achieved an extraordinary outcome for our nation. Whose devotion to principles he believed in, those principles were anchored in his strong belief that democracy was the best form of self-government for all who value freedom. He also believed in the assertions of an American statesman that it takes the eternal vigilance of citizens to sustain a democracy. He also believed in a similar refrain that democracy and the freedoms it guarantees are not free and that only those who are willing to fight free and retain their democracy would be entitled to keep it. The battle from 1996 to the day he drew his last breath in the torture chambers of the National Intelligence Office, as it was called, were all centered around the principles that he and the nation he loved needed to be free from authoritarianism and be democratic. In the pursuit of his beliefs, Salah was determined, humble, disciplined, and focused. He was courageous and resourceful. He believed in the care in his cause, so much so that he tried to convert some NIA officers to his persuasion whilst he was in previous detention in the office in Banjul. He was a self-taught man who, despite having never sat in any conventional classroom in a school setting, was able to speak and write perfect English. He had a combined wisdom, curiosity, and keen intellectual approach to everything he did. In the leadership position he was given as, long, as a long-serving member of the United Democratic Party executive, Solo always brought energy, excellent organizational skills, and laser focus on achieving results. He believed the journey to freedom entailed necessary sacrifices and he was always at the forefront of whatever was required at the time 
resources, personal comfort, or even exposing his own clothes. If he believed something needed to be done, he would first try to do it before asking anyone else. Nothing stands out more in the life of sorrow than the immense glory that lay beneath his humble disposition. He, like most Gamias, who lived under the tyranny of Yahya Jamia, was very conscious and aware of the torture and disabilities that were the hallmark of that cruel regime. He had personal experience as well as intimate knowledge of the regime's reality, but was never, one, was never the one to be coward. He believed that the price of freedom requires sacrifice, and he possessed the courage to face the dangers that stood between what obtained and what he aspired for our nation. So I believed as long as there exists a Gambia, there must be Gambians ready and willing to fight for its freedom. That was what drove him from 1996 to the day he was murdered in the hands of killers who believed by killing his, his good son of the land, they were killing the principles he, lived, he lived, believed in. The brutality of their conduct deprived this nation and his nuclear family as well as the larger Gambian family of his, of his company. In killing Solo for exercising his constitutional rights, our nation regained democracy that was interrupted for 22 years. His ultimate sacrifice of losing his life is what gave us deliverance from the Gambian regime. We must note that democracy that exists today is not a gift ramp token bestowed on us the citizens. Neither is it a miracle that materialized out of the thin air. It is the product of 22 years of struggle, paid for by the blood, tears, and sweat, and sacrifices of countless regular citizens, all of, of all persuasion, who believed in and acted on the proposition that tyranny needed to be confronted and democracy was worth fighting for. These are the people who defeated, who defeated tyranny and reconstituted the new Gambia with a promise to uphold democratic values, promote and protect the fundamental rights and freedoms gifted to us by God. That is why when freedoms are seized and in whatever, under whatever guise, those who value it become duty bound to reclaim it whatever price that may entail. So Lord was the catalyst and one of the principal architects of the reconstituted New Gambia. It is an undeniable fact that Ibrahim Solo Sandian died in the battle for freedom and democracy. It is our duty to call his legacy and that of all those who fell in the battle for a better Gambia. The best way to honor the sacrifice of the fallen is to live up to the principles of freedom and democracy for which they Pay the ultimate price. Name the monuments after them and give a national funeral to solo of symbolic and optic value, but legislating good electoral laws and more importantly, by demonstrable conduct, manifesting the core principles of freedom and bank and democracy he advocated and believed in would be the more befitting a tribute to him. Free people living a democracy that the democracy must live like free people in a democracy. So Lord died for principles whose validation must go beyond verbal affirmation. No Gambian should ever again be a victim of their own government. We must all abhor every indication of rights violation and cease unscrupulous adherence to the value of law, to the rule of law. All the citizens and the government have a duty to safeguard the freedom and democracy that Solo died for. So the family of Solo Sunday, you have the heartfelt condolences of a grateful nation. As we return the mortal remains of your loved one, the Allah Almighty, who presides over God. Your father, husband, uncle, my friend, my younger brother, my comrade. My trust was alive. 
you stand tall in the annals of Gambian history for his selflessness, courage, and dedication. We pray for Allah to grant him Jannah and bless him, this nation. Salah send them. Send them to Yannah. Nungkuli Banna. Kabuye Redim. Ito le Gambia Kanjura. Ito le Joya Gilo Kaboni Gambia Kanjura. On the 14th of April, Meli Efa Ye Guru Le Kogulo. But be Besuka <laughs> Avasaja kunja sade ko bijang ko yem bentumbul fada bina le baltal la na fale ko Allah ta man sukunda sifa menna man sukunda ka ko abetan ga bedin sawola ko man sukunda asot kale ni ala kita tal tal la banko ko lo do no man sa solo ala maye ken kila muhammad sulla sulla ta lo salim ala maye ka akide fata jodi assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh